Father, thank you for the kindness thank you for the showed kindness. us. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. In today's meeting, I feel how many would like God to just stand in front of you and say, do this. All right. So that's why the Bible says, follow God. Yeah. So when you can see God somehow and follow, then you get a revelation of what maybe this is the next thing for me to do. Amen. Now, one of the things about God is movement. Movement. He moves. There's God is, or the spirit of God moved on the surface of the earth. So there's, there's this movement. And that's life. All right? Um, God is full of life. Hallelujah. And um, I believe that as we are in his presence, he is giving us life. Amen. Amen. As we follow God, He is giving us life. All right? Now, how can we introduce this amazing movement that we need? All right? How can we introduce this amazing movement? And I want you to see. Zachariah, all right, Zachariah. Now, notice First John um, chapter 5. First John chapter 5. This is the record. That God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. All right? Now, notice verse 12. He that has the son has life. Amazing. That means that, means that he that has the son has movement. Like, how do you think they used to decide that people were dead in the olden days? How do you, how do you think they used to decide before there were doctors? Before there were doctors who could do a scan or who could listen to the heart or who could listen to the, 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 the heart and the chest and look at the eyes and decide that the person is dead. How, how do you think they used to? It's movement. It's not moving. It's not moved for two days. And oh, then now he's dead. Like maybe they put a, some paper on you and then see if you look at it. Or if you, you, you even want to drink or any kind of movement. Once there's no movement, then it's like he's dead. So now he's like, God is not there. So there must be some movement. Movement. Everybody move. Move where you are. Move. Yeah. That's a sign of life. Yes, it doesn't mean you are moving out of your place, but you are moving. Yes. So the Spirit of God wants movement. Today I believe that is what the Lord is trying to give to us. Amen. Are you excited about this amazing movement? Yes. Zachariah. Amazing. Type, I am moving. I am moving in the realm of the spirit. I am moving in the realm of the spirit. I am moving. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Now, Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 16. It's a roundabout verse, but it's saying what it's saying. All right? Now, in verse 15, it says, take the instruments of a foolish shepherd. But in verse 16, he says, 
I will raise up a shepherd. You see, this is a punishment. I'm going to give you a type of pastor, all right, who will not visit. He will not visit. Now, that's why we are doing visitation in the first love church. are doing a massive, what is it called? National visitation program or week. National visitation. It's just like how we used to have a national vaccination or immunization, national immunization. And they try to immunize the whole country in one, in one week. Yeah, national immunization. We are doing national visitation. Oh, yes. <laughs> he says, I will give you a shepherd who will not visit. That's so serious. Those that are cut off. And then number two, that shall not seek the young one. You like you only like old people. You minister to those over 65. You don't seek for the young. All right? That's serious. Because in Ghana, only 4% of people are over 65. Yes. At 70% are below 40. Something like that. So every ministry and every church, if you are in Ghana, it must, you must be oriented towards the young. And the reason why your church is finishing is because you are oriented towards iron rod dealers and those who sell cement. And those who, who are doing import and export business. Oh, will definitely be older people. No, I will not heal. I will give you a shepherd who will not heal that which is broken. You see, this is a bad shepherd. He has given us three things of this bad shepherd. He doesn't heal that which is broken. All broken people, God is healing you. Type, God is healing my brokenness. God is healing my brokenness. Now. God is healing my brokenness. Are you broken? God is saying, I can heal. I can heal what is broken. Have you heard that story before? Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together Again, accept the power of God. Receive every power to put Humpty Dumpty back together again in the name of Jesus. Type, my Humpty Dumpty is being put back together by the power of God. My Humpty Dumpty is being put back together. Some of you don't know how to spell Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty. Please type it for the people. Humpty Dumpty. My, hum, my personal Humpty Dumpty is being put back together again by the power of God. Whatever is broken in your life. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. If you don't believe in miracles, turn off the television and stop listening to this program. You've got to start believing in miracles and the miraculous. My personal Humpty Dumpty is being put back together Again, you can even make a, a t shirt and type it on the t shirt and say, My personal Humpty Dumpty is being put back together again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at Humpty Dumpty. Somebody has brought a Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> this one is not broken. <laughs> oh, yes. Humpty Dumpty. Now, the last part, I hope you are writing it. My personal, either my personal Humpty Dumpty or my Humpty Dumpty is being put back together again. And then, the last part of the verse that I wanted us to see is that this shepherd, this bad shepherd, he will not feed that which standeth still. So, standing still is a bad thing. 
And honestly, you, you, you may not believe it, but I've been a farmer before. And I had uh, cows. Oh, yes. And I remember one day I came and I saw one of the cows standing still. It wasn't moving. All the other cows were moving. All the other cows were moving. All the other cows were moving. It's not like they were 100. There were only eight. But, you know, this one of them was, was standing still. And it was just there. And, and, and so I was wondering, what is wrong? In the morning, he's standing there. He just stands there. And we came to, we felt that this, this cow has been bitten by a snake. Yes. I don't know. Maybe he put his nose down to eat the grass and then there was a snake to her. Go back. So it stood still and then eventually it died. I think it died. Yeah. So whoever in this meeting is standing still, you are not moving. You are not moving out of your crisis. Your crisis has been going on for how long? Your situation has been as it is. It's not changing. And you are staying, you are spiritually low and the same way, the same problems, the same things. And you can see one of the main characteristics is that you are standing stuck still. In the name of Jesus, beginning from today, every standing still, you are moving out of every place where you are stuck. In Jesus' name. Are you stuck in the mud? Are you stuck? That's why they say stuck in the mud. It is mud that usually sticks us. Yeah. It glues us to the ground. Mud. Yeah. It, it, it's like something not good. It's like you are stuck in it. And there's something called quicksand. It will take you down. So, we are going to pray, you know, and... Uh, spiritually deal with anything that is keeping you at the same level. People around you must be able to say, it seems you have gone to a higher level. Amen. Beginning from today, people will start commenting and say, I feel you have moved higher in, 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 in something. You seem higher. You seem greater. You seem to have moved on. Oh yes. You are moving on. You are moving on. I am no longer standing still. Type it. I am no longer standing still in the name of Jesus. I am no longer standing still. And I'm feeding you with something that will move you out of standing still at whatever state you are in. Yes. Oh, yes. I see somebody breaking a stalemate. I see somebody breaking a stalemate. Father, thank you for touching our lives. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Share, subscribe, like, because somebody is moving out of a stuck in the mud situation by the power, by the mercy, by the grace of God. Hmm. Can I tell you something? Yes. Second Kings chapter 7. And Elisha said, Tomorrow by this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures. <laughs> I like, I like the way Elijah said it. Tomorrow around this time. <laughs> like the impossible. Can you believe God for the impossible tomorrow about this time? Oh, yes. Then a Lord, a Lord, there was a big man on whose hand the king leaned. And he answered, he answered the man. There are people who always answer. They can even answer you on social media, answer you on Facebook, okay. try to insult you on Facebook. Say, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, oh. huh, might this thing be? Oh, and Elisha said, there's always an answer. 
Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. You know what happened? They, they ran over him. This is one of the earliest stampedes. The next day when they saw the food and they ran, they ran over him. And he died. So be careful. But when people are saying amen and are pulling things down from heaven, you are sitting there cynically looking and saying, hmm. But I like something that I'm about to see. Are you ready for something that I'm about to see? There were four guys. There were four lepers. Four leprous men at the entering of the gate. I don't know if you are a leper today. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? Why should we be stuck? Why should we be stuck in this spot? All the way until death. Not good. Not a good idea. Following God means moving out of whatever you are stuck. Maybe you are stuck in your church at 70. You are stuck in your church at 33 members. 32 members. 27 members. 19 members. Why are you stuck? And God is saying, you are, saying are you going to stay with these 14 members till you die? So even these men with their handicaps rose up and said, you know something? What is the whole point of just lying here till we die? Come on, let's do something. Yeah, if we perish, we perish. You see? And they said, if they kill us, we shall but die. Look at the last line there. He said, we will enter into the city and the farm in the city. If we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, let us fall onto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. Let's just, let's just, let's just give it a try. What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst? He said, we, but die. We only die. After all, we are dying already. <laughs> we are lepers. Let's give it a shot. Oh, right type. I am not sitting here till I die. I'm not sitting in this spot. Type, I am not sitting in this spot till I die. Financially, spiritually, in the ministry, I'm not going to be at this spot till I die. It's not possible. Even lepers were able to see the way forward. How much more you in the name of Jesus? Father, thank you for giving us an amazing deliverance out of every dark, sticking spot, sticky spot that is sticking us to the ground. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that it is not possible for us to be stuck here. We are following God who is moving and we thank you for this great grace to follow God today. In Jesus' name, amen.